While most manufacturers in India today have been moving the way down the price chain, Hyundai has been going against the tide. It started off with the Elite i20 that offered a balance of quality and design that we'd never really seen in the segment before. It continued with the Creta and with the 6th generation Elantra, Hyundai keeps moving into more premium spaces. And now they bring us this, the Tucson. Uh, Tucson. Tucson? Tucson. One of Hyundai's most widely mispronounced models and the missing link between the Creta and the Santa Fe. The question is though, was this a gap that needed to be filled and more importantly, has it been done right? Everyone has their baggage and for the Tucson, it's the awkward styling of both its predecessors. The first gen that was sold in India and the second gen also known as the iX35 that wasn't. Hyundai, however, has gone back to the drawing board with the latest generation. It follows the fluidic 2.0 design architecture, so the looks are anything but understated. The signature hexagonal grille highlights the front and is flanked by plus-size headlamp clusters that feature dual-barrel LED lights and LED pilot lights. Even the fog lamp housing is aggressively contoured with the DRLs slitting it in the middle. The side profile looks particularly sporty thanks to the kick-up window line, aerodynamic silhouette and the sleek heated wing mirrors. Opt for the automatic and you get a slick set of diamond cut 18-inch alloy wheels too. At the back, the LED taillights look a lot like the Elite i20s and the rear doesn't look bumper heavy like the Creta thanks to the rear fog lamps, diesel exclusive skid plates and dual tail pipes cutting the bulk. It is a very attention grabbing thing and it feels well built too. But once you're in, you're faced with a rather unique letdown. Now the Elite i20 won us over with the kind of quality it offered. But while that was fine for the segment it's in, you do find yourself wishing for so much more in a 20 lakh rupee Hyundai. And unfortunately, that wow factor is kind of missing in the Tucson's dashboard, especially considering the flamboyant exterior. It is, however, a nicely laid out cabin. You get these nice premium touches all around. The beige and black dual tone cabin looks nice and premium. You get good touches like the metallic accents around the AC vents, not to mention soft touch plastics over here as well. It's also practical. You do get two 12 volt charging sockets out here, the aux and USB ports over here as well. There's space for two cups in the middle, a slot separately for your loose change and your keys and even a nice and big space for your cell phone. There's more to it as well. The steering, it's adjustable for both rake and reach. The sun visor, it can be extended. You get a well-sized vanity mirror with a light which is manual. In addition to that, there's storage underneath the central armrest plus a tray. Not to mention the storage in the doors themselves along with the glove box that's cooled as well. As you'd expect, Hyundai has loaded the Tucson to the gills with features, including leather upholstery, a 10-way power-adjustable driver's seat, cruise control, a 4.2-inch multi-information display, and an 8-inch touchscreen AVN system. The setup offers crisp pixel density, and the UI is simple too, but there's definitely some noticeable lag. You also get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay support with audio from a crisp 6-speaker sound system. Feature-packed it is indeed, though some will be miffed at the missing ventilated seats and sunroof, especially since the Elantra gets both. Yes, there's adequate space for 5 adults and the rear seats can not only be reclined, they split 60-40 all the seats provide adequate overall support, but the middle passenger won't be too comfortable. The rear AC vent console is intrusive, while the front seats have hard plastic at the back, so there's no cushioning your knees if you're tall. The rear armrest also juts out a fair bit when folded in, so the backrest isn't comfortable for the middle occupant either. It is, however, a practical cabin, and apart from storage in the doors, you do get seat back pockets plus a rear armrest with cup holders. 
there are a borderline ridiculous number of options to access the boot. You can hit a button on the dash or tailgate, press and hold the button on the key fob or just stand behind the car with the key in your pocket for a few seconds and it opens automatically. The tailgate also comes with anti-pinch and you can even choose a preset height for it to open up to. Now Hyundai offers the Tucson with both petrol and diesel engine options, both available with 6-speed manual and automatic transmissions as well. The petrol is the same new 2-litre unit you get in the Elantra and uh, it's essentially in a slightly higher state of tune. Ironically though, the actually new engine here is the 2.0-litre R diesel unit that we are driving right now, equipped with a 6-speed automatic transmission. Now, refinement levels have been the biggest priority for Hyundai with the Tucson. And you can tell, the cylinder block itself, it's been shaved down to get the weight down low and refinement levels are appreciable. You can tell it is a diesel, there is a little bit of clatter, but it's not really annoying or you know a disturbance of any sort and there's no real harshness or vibrations that creep into the cabin. Now being a diesel, you get the inherent benefit of great low-end torque delivery. 400 Nm in this case and it's all delivered from as low as 1750 RPM. What that translates into is great usability and drivability, whether it's in the city or on the highway. Honestly, path throttle is enough to even get you into triple digit speeds. And like most diesels, it doesn't like to be revved hard. It is rev happy, but you don't really need to use that part of its characteristic. The six-speed automatic transmission is a traditional torque converter and it's not really to an enthusiast's taste. Shifts are pretty quick, it is pretty eager to upshift as well, and they're pretty seamless too, it's nice and comfortable to use. Yes, you do get a manual mode, even though there aren't paddle shifters, but honestly, the manual mode only comes in handy occasionally during overtakes and maybe when you want to drive about on the guts. Even in manual mode, the gearbox doesn't really allow for very aggressive downshifts. It is pretty conservative that way. But since the engine is pretty rev happy, it does let you go up to beyond 4000 RPM and honestly, you don't need to go beyond that. Overall, the powertrain is cruise friendly and efficiency focused, which is why you get a nice ARAI claimed efficiency figure of 16.38 kmpl. The automatic variant also gets the Eco and Sport drive modes. Eco sobers everything down for improved efficiency and works perfectly in the city, while Sport improves the throttle sensitivity, adds a little weight to the steering and makes it more direct too. Dynamically, it's pretty sedan-like. It is based on a monocoque chassis, so there's not much rollabout, it doesn't feel too top-heavy and it's pretty predictable, especially if you're upgrading from a sedan. It manages bad roads, potholes, broken patches, you name it, surprisingly well. Especially considering the fact that the automatic, it rides on 18-inch wheels, which are pretty large. Thankfully, the steering, traditionally a weak point with Hyundai's, it is more communicative than we've seen in traditional Hyundai's. While it is one finger light during city conditions, on the highway, it is nice and direct and weighs up just right. The brakes, though, are a bit of a mixed bag. Yes, you do get four-wheel disc brakes, but like we've seen in the Krata, you do have to press the pedal a fair bit before the brakes actually bite. They definitely could have been sharper. And there's a healthy safety feature list that makes this a five-star safety rated vehicle by Euro NCAP, Australian NCAP and even the NHTSA. So did Hyundai need the Tucson and is it a job done right? Well, yes and yes. With the thousands of Duster, Creta, XUV500 and indeed executive sedan owners out there, you'd have to imagine that they'd want to upgrade at some point and not necessarily to something as hardcore as the Fortuner or Ford Endeavor. They'd also want the option of a diesel engine that you don't get with the CRV and the looks of a traditional SUV that you don't really get with the Skoda Yeti. The Tucson is a good upgrade, a well-packaged alternative and comes back by Hyundai's brand reputation. It doesn't excel at anything in particular, but it is the best all-rounder in a segment that's almost inexistent. Not only is it something you can safely buy, but something you can certainly recommend as well.